Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you all are doing good. So in this video, I'll be introducing you about types of microbial interactions. So let's start. So firstly, you should know that microorganisms or microbial populations living in different kind of environment usually interact with each other in seven different ways. Or we can say that there are seven different types of microbial interactions, right? Now we will try to understand each of these interaction one by one. So here we take the first interaction that we call as mutualism. Let's try to understand mutualism with the help of this schematic diagram, right? Suppose here we are going to study two different microbial population that we have labeled as A and B living in an environment and interacting with each other, right? When we observe the interaction between these two different type of microorganisms, what we observe that A gives some kind of benefit to the B. And when B interacts with A, B also gives some kind of benefit to the A. Or we can say that each organism in interaction gets benefit from this association. When this type of benefit is availed by both of the partners involved in the interaction, then we say that this kind of interaction is mutualism, right? So let's see now second type of microbial interaction cooperation. So if we talk about cooperation, let's again try to understand it with the help of two different microbial populations, say one and two, right? During cooperation or during this type of interaction, one will give some kind of benefit to the two and two will also give some kind of benefit to the one when they will establish this type of interaction. So we can say that each organism in cooperation or in this interaction gets benefit. Now you may be thinking that both mutualism and cooperation are same because what we observe in both cases that the partners involved in both of these kind of interactions are getting benefit from each other. Now question comes how these interactions are different from each other, why we are categorizing them as different type of interaction. Then of course your point is right. There is some difference between mutualism and cooperation and what is that difference? Let's try to understand that now. So if we talk about mutualism, then you should know mutualism is a kind of obligatory relationship between two different type of microbial populations or microorganisms involved in the interaction. And if we talk about cooperation, then you should know cooperation is a kind of non-obligatory type of relationship between the different type of microorganisms involved in the interaction. Now, what is obligatory and non-obligatory? Then you should know when we say mutualism is a kind of obligatory interaction, then here you should know when we separate one microorganisms from the another one, suppose here we are going to separate B from the A, then we should know that survival of A or B will not be possible then. Why? Because this interaction is a mandatory requirement in order to make their survival possible in a particular environment. Right. That's why we say that the relationship between A and B is obligatory. Now we are talking about cooperation. Cooperation, we are saying that this is a kind of non-obligatory relationship between the kind of partners involved in this interaction. Means if we separate two from the one, then even then survival of one and two will be possible in the same environment because they are not totally dependent on each other for their survival. Right. Although some of their functions can be impaired once they get separated from each other, but still they can easily survive independently also. That's why we say the relationship between one and two will be non-obligatory here. And this non-obligatory nature of relationship between two partners, then we say that the interaction is cooperation, right? So let's see the third type of interaction now, commensalism. If we talk about commensalism, then you should know in this case, again, we are going to take two different type of populations. We have labeled here as X and Y, right? So what we observe here in this interaction, X will be giving some kind of benefit to the Y. But when we observe the kind of interaction Y is making with the X, then of course it is get, getting benefit from the X, but in return, Y will not be giving any kind of benefit to the X. We can say it will neither harm it nor it will be benefiting it, right? So we can say in commensalism, one organism gets benefit while the other is neither benefited nor harmed, right? So this was about commensalism. And one more point we can observe that commensalism is a kind of unidirectional interaction. When we compare it with that of mutualism and cooperation, which are bi-directional kind of 
microbial interactions. So let's see the fourth type now, amensalism. If we talk about amensalism, again we are going to consider here two different type of microbial populations A and B or we can say two different type of microorganisms, right? Amensalism is just like commensalism when we talk about unidirectionality. But it is just opposite to commensalism when we observe that here in this case one microorganism will be posing some kind of negative impact on the another microbial population. Means it will be producing some kind of substance or we can say it will show that kind of response which will be inhibiting the growth of another microbial population involved in the interaction with it. Right. So we can say in amensalism one organism has a negative effect on the another organism. Right. Let's see the next interaction parasitism. So if we talk about parasitism here you should know again we are going to consider two different type of microbial populations or we can say two different type of microorganisms present in an environment. Now what we observe here a specific kind of terminology is used for the partners involved in the interaction in case of parasitism. What is that terminology? For what one partner we use the term parasite and for the another partner or we can say another type of microorganism or microbial population we use the term host. So as a result of this interaction what actually happens? Parasite attacks the host, right? And this interaction of parasite and host always result in what? Killing of the host. Why parasite attacks the host? In order to fulfill its nutritional requirement or just to get the shelter for its physical maintenance. So we can say what is parasitism? Here one what we call as parasite benefits from the other host which is usually harmed, right? So for short or long period of time both parasite and host can also coexist but the end of course host will be killed as a result of this relationship between host and parasite what we call as parasitism. Let's see the next interaction predation. So if we talk about predation, predation is just like parasitism. How? Here we use only different kind of terminology like what we were saying is host that is prey in case of predation. What we were saying as parasite in case of parasitism that we are saying predator in case of predation, right? Now you may be thinking then if why we are going to use different kind of terminology in case of predation if it is just like parasitism. Of course there are certain points of differences that I'll be telling you. Let's first understand this interaction in case of predation. Of course just like parasite host predator will be attacking what? Prey, right? So as I told you predator will be attacking prey but here like parasitism there will be no coexistence of the predator and prey for short or long period of time. Predation usually result in immediate killing of the prey after attack by the predator, right? Means no coexistence will be there. Secondly, size of predator has also been reported to be larger than the prey in many cases when we compare it with that of partners involved in case of parasitism. So what is predation? We can say one organism here that we call as predator attacks and usually kills other organism what we call as prey. So I hope Difference between parasitism and predation is also clear to you all. Let's see the next interaction, competition. So competition as its name is indicating, of course, there will be a kind of competition between here two different type of microorganisms, right? What we have labeled here as A and B. So A and B will be co having competition for what? Of course, they will be competing for the utilization of a particular kind of substrate or some kind of resource material for which purpose they want to utilize it. Of course, in order to fulfill their nutritional requirement or to fulfill their physical maintenance requirement, right? Just to utilize uh, this substrate as a shelter for them, right? So what will be the result of competition? Of course, during this interaction, A and B both will be uh, attacking on the same kind of substrate and they will try to utilize it fully. Due to the competition between A and B, what will be the outcome? One population will be outgrowing the another population or we can say one population will actually dominate the substrate or that particular environment while the another will not be able to dominate that particular environment. So we can say that this type of interaction is competition. So here we say one of the two competing organisms can dominate the environment and outgrow the other organisms. So this was uh, all about different type of microbial interactions that have been reported to occur in different kind of environmental conditions right among different type of microbial populations. So now one more thing I would like to tell you the interactions what we have studied from point number one to three means mutualism, cooperation and commensalism. 
these three interactions are also called as positive interactions why we call them as positive interactions because what we observe either one or both the partners involved in these interactions get benefit from each other right in such type of interactions and interactions what we have covered in from point number 4 to 7 from amancelism to competition they are also called as negative interactions right why we say negative microbial interactions because in this case one partner will be harmed by the another partner involved in the interaction right so i hope this content will really going to help you very soon i'll also try to upload detailed videos on each of these interaction with relevant examples so stay tuned for that and if you found this video helpful then don't forget to press like and subscribe to our channel thank you so much keep watching